Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thanks for joining us. 37 million American adults are estimated to live with chronic kidney disease, or CKD. And one of the complications is anemia, the symptoms of which can reduce quality of life and the capacity to work. We're here to discuss the crucial unmet need among patients with CKD is Dr. Robert Provenzano. He's Associate Clinical Professor of Medicine at Wayne State University School of Medicine in Detroit. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Provenzano. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you, Neil, for having me. I really appreciate this opportunity. A brief bit of your background, and then let's talk about what chronic kidney disease is and who's affected. Yeah, so I have uh, practiced in Detroit for over 25 years, um, training residents and training um, fellows, which are basically people who specialize in kidney disease, uh, and, of course, treating patients. So um, you're right. Uh, 37 million Americans, that's an epidemic, and we like to call chronic kidney disease, the silent epidemic. And silent because the early stages are basically asymptomatic. You don't know you even have them. Mm -hmm. And um, if that, uh, in in that case, it's important for you to know if you're at risk. So the way we as physicians focus on this, we determine who's at risk. We know that diabetes and hypertension make up over 70% of patients who have chronic kidney disease. So if indeed you have diabetes or hypertension, you're at an increased risk and you should ask your doctor what the status of your kidneys are. Additionally, we know there's some demographic um, risk factors. For example, people of color at an increased risk for chronic kidney disease. If you have a first degree relative with chronic kidney disease or kidney failure, you're at increased risks. So if you fall into these categories, Uh, you should uh, seek out information from your doctor as to the status of your kidney. Now, when we're talking about chronic kidney disease, are we talking about something that is never going to be cured as opposed to other kidney diseases that there are cures for? Yeah, it's a great question. So uh, chronic kidney disease, uh, as I mentioned, it's a process, right? My kidneys are working 100%, knock on wood, I hope. Um, We know as we get older, our kidney function decreases. That's just normal aging. But various disease processes can impact the kidney and cause the percent kidney function to drop from 100 to 60 to 30. Mm -hmm. So the question is, to your point, is is it curable? If you can identify kidney disease soon enough, uh, there are major scientific breakthroughs that can help manage it right? Mm -hmm. And that's the key. The key is to stabilize your kidney function, keep your kidneys from failing, keep you off of dialysis. So yeah, the the therapies are there, but you need to know as early as possible the status of your kidney function. Are there any other major uh, potential outcomes living with chronic kidney disease other than dialysis? Yeah. so, So let's talk just for a moment about the symptoms, right? Because early on it is asymptomatic, but then you do start getting symptoms. Since the kidneys filter our blood and get rid of extra water, one of the earliest symptoms can be retaining fluid. So you might get swelling of the legs or puffiness of the face or shortness of breath so you get fluid in the lungs. Additionally, your kidneys get rid of excess salts. One of the salts is potassium. So If this builds up in your body, you can get heart arrhythmias, and it can lead to death. Another issue that most people don't realize because it's not intuitive is your kidneys make a hormone that tells your bone marrow to make blood. And often patients can present with severe anemia. Now, you know, some people have had anemia for different causes, but let me remind you. Imagine waking up tomorrow with half the amount of blood your body normally should have. Your activities of daily living, the things we do every day, we wake up, we go to work, we go to the store, we take the kids to school, uh, we run errands, your ability to do that goes right out the window. You're fatigued, you have no energy, you don't feel like doing anything, you stay in bed, and all of these things are due to anemia and often lead to depression. More importantly, it impacts your ability to do your job. And if you can't do your job, then you're missing time from work and you can lose your job, which then just compounds the stress on an entire family. 
So chronic kidney disease, particularly with anemia, impacts not only the patient, their ability to interact with their families. And the good news is it's the 21st century. And to your question, the federal government 18 months ago put a laser focus on chronic kidney disease and its cure. And they have aligned the uh, kidney care scientific community, the federal government, and patients to bring together opportunities to stop this from happening. Now, that's not going to happen overnight, as we know. But early identification is critical because the treatment for kidney failure in the United States is kidney transplantation. So you may ask, well, who are all these people on dialysis? Very often there are people who, for different healthcare reasons, aren't suitable for transplantation or just found out that their kidneys had failed before they had symptoms and before they were identified. So they're waiting for a kidney transplant. But again, focus on early identification, communicating with your doctor. I, I like to tell people, this is the 21st century. There's no reason for any patient to be timid. If you are in a high risk group, get to your doctor, get your questions answered, bring a family member with you. That's often the best way of getting questions answered because patients would be timid. You bring a spouse with you, mm -hmm. timidity goes out the window. Have you found that um, many patients are simply not getting the care that they need due to COVID-19 as opposed to some of the other normal reasons that a patient would forego a treatment or a session? Yeah, uh, it's a great question, and I'll be honest with you. You know, when COVID hit, everybody in this country had to sort of learn a new dance. Mm -hmm. And we in healthcare um, had to figure that out. Patients were scared to come in. Many of our staff were scared to interact. But with virtual health care now through the Internet, uh, patients are, you know, back to normal. So we're interacting with them. But, but to your earlier point with the Internet, patients need to educate themselves. Um, unfilteredkidneyconversations.com is a great start for at-risk patients. Mm -hmm. They can register, download information, take that to their doctors, and get their questions answered. Again, what is that website? So unfilteredkidneyconversations.com. Well, what do you see for the future for folks living with chronic kidney disease? Uh, I'm an optimist. Uh, the future is uh, very, very bright. There are scientific breakthroughs happening all the time. Um, this is, I, I, I would just keep a very positive outlook, and um, it'll be great. Well, I appreciate you joining us here on the program this morning. Thank you so much, Neil. You have a great weekend. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.